Today I'm going to be assembling a TZ Duino. Uh, this one has been supplied to me by Stephen Vickers. It's his own design, but it's based upon a reference design. There's quite a few of them knocking around on the internet of various designs. Um, this one's a fairly standard one with a uh, Arduino SD card reader some form of display uh, buttons a couple of discretes and a headphone jack uh, the board has been supplied to me free of charge by Stephen for my evaluation um, he also wanted me to video it so that he could demonstrate the assembly to people uh, but other than that uh, the views are completely my own um, he has pre-mounted some of the uh, components for delivery. They were taped on. So it's quite modular, this. It should be a fairly easy build. There's only two discretes and some buttons to solder on. Uh, it looks like a resistor back and a capacitor. Uh, the trickiest bit is probably going to be soldering the Arduino one, just simply because there's so many pins to solder. Uh, the display's only got four pins. I think that the let's count the SD card reader. That's got three, four, six pins. So that's not going to take an awful lot of time to solder. I reckon it'll probably take a competent person about twenty-five minutes, thirty minutes to get this soldered up ready for test. So let's see how competent I am. Right, I picked the orange board. The Stephen ships these in a variety of colours. I think orange, red and black off the top of my head. I don't think he does a white one. Uh, he asked me what colour I wanted. I quite fancied the orange one, to be honest. It does look rather smart, doesn't it? So, let's crack on with soldering. Less waffling, more soldering. Uh, soldering irons up to temperature. I might just boost that a little bit. There we go. Uh, I've got all my tools, got my solder. I use 6040 leaded solder. I've said this in previous videos, I really don't get on with unleaded solder. Um, I think unleaded solder is a requirement if you're selling things. So if you're a major manufacturer like Samsung or you're selling stuff um, as a small manufacturer, you need to use unleaded solder. It needs to be unleaded. Um, if you're just building stuff for your own pleasure, then leaded solder is absolutely fine. It's getting increasingly difficult to get hold of, actually. I use Weller solder, again, um, not being sponsored by Weller in any way, shape or form. Uh, it's my preference. I usually pick between 0.7 and 1mm uh, thickness. Right, soldering those up to temperature. Let's get soldering. First thing I'll do is... Uh, look at the destructions. Um, Stephen's suggesting soldering the Arduino on first. So let's take the other components off. They will come off. Oh, and they're nice and tight. That's good. In fact, I'll just take that off to make it easier to get the screen out. There we go. These screens are tiny, aren't they? That's an OLED screen, I believe. Absolutely tiny. I'm going to need my glasses to read that, I think. Right, so, Stephen says, solder the Arduino Nano in place. USB port at left. Well, they'd already shipped it like that, hadn't they? So it goes like... Oh, make sure I line the pins up. Like so. There we go. And... I'll do what I did with the um, RAM tester, which is I'll solder it in place like this to make sure everything's aligned. Solder the uh, Duino to the header pins and then flip it over and then solder <coughs> the assembled unit um, onto the board.
two more to go. Last one. And we're done. Let's have a look at my handiwork. That's not bad at all, actually, that. I don't think we've got any bad joints on there. No bridges. Do the other side. There. Fixed. Okay, so that's the Duino in. What's next? SD card reader. That's this fella here. That goes into here, like so. That's what take along, will it? Hmm. Must pin to be a bit of a pain. There we go. Maybe reflow that second to last one. And two. That will do. What's next? Uh where does he put the screen on? The OLED screen goes in last. So the third thing is the network resistor pack. Now these are quite useful uh, electronic components. It's like a... Let's get the, all of the components out here. It's like... Um, a handful of resistors. Is that all the components now? I'm sure I've got a switch in here stuck on the tape. There we go. It's like a handful of components, uh, resistors in one package with one common. So in this one, we've got a common, which is you can just about see the dot there on the left hand side, and then you've got one, two, three, four, five. Pins, so it's five resistors essentially. So Stephen's saying, sold a resistor network in place before the SD reader. This must be with the dot on the leftmost pin. So double check, that's definitely a dot on the leftmost pin there. Let's get that soldered in. So that goes underneath the SD card reader. You can see he's put a square pad there for the common. Here we go. 
and we'll hold this in place with some blue tack just to make sure it goes in level that should do the trick okay just solder the outer pins and then we can always adjust it if necessary with a bit of heat off the soldering iron to take the blue tack off what does that look like yeah that'll do maybe push that end in a bit there we go that's fine Let's get the rest of these soldered up. <sighs> and next, push buttons. These are always good fun. So I've got five, one, two, three, four, five push buttons push in place, solder in place. So push them in first. It's quite a nice kit this, to be honest. It's not complicated. In the slightest. That level. Yeah, it's level enough. There we go, one down, four to go. Am I feeling brave? Can I just push them all in and solder them? I reckon so, they seem to be quite grippy. Stephen advises against this, but I'm gonna throw caution to the wind here. I mean, they're not coming out any at all, are they really? Thanks to the claw-like pins of the switch. There we go. There we go. Happy with that. Put the solder iron in the holder. What do the instructions say next? Audio jack. What's this fella here? Let's see how this goes in. That must go there. This will need quite a bit of solder to hold it in place. That looks fit. So again, with the blue tack, hold it in place. Oh, or even just pull it out completely. Why not do that instead? There you go.
<laughs> yep. That way. Now straight that. I don't think that's going to get much straighter. Maybe excess blue tuck on there, I'll wipe that off in a minute. Sometimes if you're finding your soldering and it's just not getting the leg hot enough to melt the solder <coughs> or the pad hot enough to melt the solder, just stick a bit of solder on the soldering iron, tin your soldering iron, because the solder will act as it will conduct the heat through to the pin or the pad. There we go. There we go. Hopefully that will hold that in place. Let me quickly just wipe this excess blue tack off. There we go. Excellent. Um, it looks like we've got two components left. The, there's a six pin header which he says we don't need. So I will put that in my bag of components here. The uh, two components left are the capacitor and the OLED screen. So the capacitor goes uh, below the audio jack. Capacitor one goes here. I just bend, bend the pins and snip as I usually do for soldering. Bending the pins just holds the component in place. That'll do. I'll snip afterwards to be honest. <coughs> I hope this works first time. It should do. It's a straightforward board. I'm quite late to the party with these T ZX Dweeb. Huh? There are a number of um, different versions of this. All based upon a reference model. Um, these are the most common ones, I think, based upon uh, an Arduino. Um, the Arduino is doing most of the legwork. Uh, it's driving the OLED screen. It's reading the SD card. I think there are there are libraries for reading the SD card and driving the screen. So that's fairly straightforward in software. <coughs> <coughs> and it just drives the output. Directly from one of the, is it a digital pin or an analog pin? I don't know. It drives it off one of the pins. I've been told it might be a digital pin. There are some <coughs> quite clever derivatives of this, though. Um, one of my favourites, which is designed for the Plus Two, or anybody's got that's got a cassette recorder is by a chap called Stuart Brand um, who's managed to cram in um, all of these components uh, into a cassette case um, with a cassette head so it works a little bit like those audio adapters you used to get back in the 80s and 90s for converting your discman to work in a cassette player within your car I'm going back a bit here I'll post some pictures for those of you that don't know what the hell I'm talking about um, <clears throat> So the idea is you put this into your cassette player and it drives the head in the cassette body which then um, outputs a signal to the head in the cassette player um, which picks it up as if it was a magnetic tape signal and, 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 and you just load. It's as simple as that. Um, but there's quite a... Quite a fiddly um, a 
quite an incredible piece of work actually managed to get all of this into a cassette body. Um, there's another chap, uh, one of my friends on Twitter called uh, Ollie Wilkinson, who's uh, done the same, but rather than doing it on um, Vero board, he's designed a PCB, which we will be assembling at some point in the next couple of weeks, uh, which does exactly the same, but the PCB is designed to fit inside the um, shell of a cassette. Um, I'll post links to the GitHub for Stuart Brand, and um, yeah, look out for that in the next couple of weeks on my YouTube channel. Okay, so back to the task at hand. Uh, capacitors in, just need to snip the pins down to before I forget. So let's do that now. Let's put that in there. Should really snip the pins on the Duino as well. They're a bit long, aren't they? I'll do that last after I've tested it. Uh, it's the screen, last but by no means least, this rather lovely LED screen, OLED screen. Now, what Stuart suggested is you solder a small piece of foam onto the uh, opposite end of the um, screen from the pins because. And I think this is the reason why. When you put the screen in, if you notice, it's at a rather jaunty angle if you just solder it in. And what we really want is for it to be straight. So to be straight, you need to just really fill that gap to give the screen a bit of support. So what I've done is I've found a piece of non-conductive foam. I think I got it for, a, I don't know, probably a chip delivery. I've cut it to the right size and thickness. Uh, I'm just going to glue it to the bottom of the screen here before I solder it on. So bear with me, caller, while I just get my super glue. Right, so let's do that first. Super glue is a wonderful, wonderful invention. Um, the nozzle is clear, fantastic. So I'm just going to put a tiny dot on the board. Let's try it on a piece of something that... Oh, there we go. Nothing worse than squeezing, getting the entire contents of the tube coming out. Always best to try it on a piece of paper first. Let's just put a tiny dot on there. And then hopefully this will hold the foam in place without melting it or something horrendous, horrendous like that, some weird chemical reaction. So let's just put that there, like so. Perfect. That should give me enough padding. That's held in place. I won't bother soldering on the board. That's fine. That's both sides. Don't need soldering. It's just to give the uh, this a bit of support. So let's see how that works. Yep, that's worked quite well. Happy with that. Once it's soldered in, that'll be fine. So let's do that now. Uh, will I hold it in with glue top first? Yeah, I reckon so. Just to be on the safe side. That foam's worked quite well, actually. Right, a final component. The soldering iron was just about to go to sleep then, that was good. I've got a temperature control, control soldering iron and I don't know how it does it, but it knows when you're soldering or not. I mean, how does it know that? How does it know when I pick the soldering iron up? I've not seen any sensors in it to say that it's uh, on the move. Amazing. So one. Two. See a level lies. Take the blue tack off. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Three, four. 
Just re flow that first one, it looks a bit dicky. That's fine. Right. <coughs> Put the soldering iron away. Always remember, give it a tin just to protect the tip. And there we go. Switch it off. One completed. TZX Duino. I'll be testing this and putting it through its paces in the next video. In the meantime, if you've enjoyed this video, then please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.